the red creeping right here. Got him. <laughs> Hey guys, this is Tony here with Salt Strong, and in this video I wanted to share a quick tip that will help you find redfish during low tide. Now I was out filming an insider report recently and it was a low tide situation and I found myself looking in the wrong areas for redfish and it wasn't until I finally found them that I realized I was looking in the wrong areas. So I want to show you uh, where you should be looking for redfish when it is low tide. Now I was fi uh, filming an insider report so I do have some on the water footage that I want to share with you of a nice redfish that I caught in this low tide situation. But the full report's reserved for our insider members where we show exactly where we were and why we were there based on other factors. You know, uh, the wind, what time of year it is, also, uh, you know, weather conditions, all those variables come into play. And those full insider reports are for insider members. If you're not an insider member, highly recommend checking that out. Now first I'm going to show an example of an area here that is very similar uh, to the type of area I was fishing, but not anywhere in particular. This is just a random spot I pulled up here. So when you have redfish, you have to understand their behavior. They like to be very shallow because that's where their food's at. Their body is built to basically belly crawl if they need to in shallow areas. And the biggest mistake people make is that they think, okay, the tide's going out, so I have to go fish deeper, you know, in two, three, four, five feet of water, which isn't the case. If there's enough water close to the shoreline when the tide's out, those fish will stay there. Uh, but you have to understand what they're doing during high tide as well. High tide, they're going to push up into these small feeder creeks, or they're going to push up into the mangroves on the shoreline. If there's water, pushed up way back into those trees, good chance those fish are going to be pushed up there as well. Now when the tide comes out, for example, we have these feeder creeks right here, all these little feeder creeks, and they sort of dead end. But on a high tide, they may not dead end necessarily. This area could flood out, and those fish will be pushed into the grass. Now when the water pushes out, if there's still enough water in that creek, those fish may not even leave the creek. You know, They may just hang right on the edge of the grass. Uh, as long as there's a few inches of water there on low tide, those redfish will still be there. So in this case, on this trip that I was fishing, I was fishing in a shoreline that had some feeder creeks coming out. And those fish were up in those feeder creeks during uh, high tide. The tide was still coming out. So what happened was those fish slowly started pushing out to where they can still swim, but they weren't f you know, far away from the shoreline. So that's what you really want to look for is if there's still enough water for those fish to be up close to a shoreline or up close to that creek that they were just in or even in that creek that they were in, they're still going to stay there. They're not going to push out to, you know, the open flat if there's still water up in the area that they were originally feeding in. And then another example here, let's say the shoreline. You have these two small feeder creeks right there that sort of go into the grass over here. When the tide goes out, if there's still enough water in those creeks, there's a good chance those fish will stay in those creeks. And if not, they may push out just out to the shoreline right next to those feeder creeks. Or they may push out a little further out onto you know the flat that may be just outside of those feeder creeks. Again, it's really gonna depend on water level. Uh, you know, if there's anywhere from six inches to a foot of water still there, good chance those fish will still hang out as long as their food's there. So now let me go ahead and switch over to some on the water footage where you see a nice redfish that I was able to catch fishing low tide using these same tactics. The red creeping right here. Got him. <laughs> That's a good one. Nice. He was creeping. <laughs> Super shallow water. <laughs> Maybe a foot. He was hungry. He's a nice fish. That makes the day right there. Nice red. There he is. Got him. 
That's a nice healthy one, upper slot red. Slam Shady 2.0, just like I said, these two creeks right here, when the tide was coming out, there were fish at the entrance, but they weren't very active. The tide came all the way out. Now these fish are just cruising around in this shallow water looking for food. It's about 11.50 in the morning. So late bite, he swallowed that thing. Slam Shady 2.0, late morning, low tide. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, I highly recommend checking out our Salt Strong Insider Club where we share videos very similar to this, but in much more detail as to where we're fishing and why we're fishing there so that our Insider members can use those same tactics and trends to get on fish in their areas. So we definitely guarantee that you'll start catching more fish in less time in the Insider Club, so definitely be sure to check it out at saltstrong.com. Now, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to drop them down below. Until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. And if you're new to Salt Strong, just know that we're the best online fishing club in America, especially if you're targeting redfish, sea trout, snook, or flounder. There's nothing else like it because we actually guarantee that you'll start catching more inshore fish while saving time and money. We do this through premium education, our exclusive insider fishing community, and huge discounts on the best tackle for saltwater anglers. To learn more, go to saltstrong.com. Otherwise, we hope to see you again soon.